Well, good morning, holy greetings to you, brothers and sisters, and God bless you. This is Scott Bradley. This is the Rivers of Life Inspiration Broadcast. Thank God for this day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and glad in it. We thank God for all of you that are tuning us in today. And as we are opening up with our theme song, Brother, the late great Brother Andre Crouch sing that song, Praises. But we praise the Lord because he is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Thank you for tuning us in and welcome us into your places of uh, business, into your homes, into your churches, into your Bible studies, into your prayer groups. Wherever our image is being seen, our voice being heard at this time, we welcome you come in today as we have a word from the Lord to share with you. But in the meantime, let's praise the Lord. Let's give God the praise and thank God for this day that he had made and rejoice in joy in the God of our salvation. It means a lot to be able to bless him and to praise him. You know, it's interesting that some people in some religions around the world don't have a personal relationship with their God. Of course, their God is false and it's not the God of the Bible. But thank God our God is alive. Thank God Jesus is alive. Thank God the Holy Ghost is alive and we can praise and magnify and glorify the name of the Lord. So brother, I'm just singing, praise him, praise him. Praise him, all the people praise him. Jesus Christ, our King. Oh, praise him, praise him. Let all the people praise him. Jesus Christ, our King. All right, God bless you. Thank you, Brother Andre. We will be here, we're here of course, at the close of our broadcast today. But again, I want to welcome all of you in to come and be with us today at the Rivers of Life Inspiration Broadcast. Thank God for all of you that we've been hearing from, from all over the world as you'll continue to be blessed by this ministry. My heart, my soul is blessed. I rejoice because you are hearing this word and are being blessed. I want you to continue to pray for me, brothers and sisters. There are great challenges coming now uh, in this 21st century, uh, particularly among religion, particularly among the world itself. And uh, of course, we that are standing up to be to live holy, to live for the Lord, to be Christians, not just in name only, but in action. And indeed, there is a great challenge that is presented to us. Well, we see it all the time. We've been written about it. Uh, the latest book that we've done, The Challenges of the 21st Century Church. There are challenges. There is political correctness. There is gender reversal. Men want to be women. Women want to be men. And even so, uh, some don't necessarily want to take the place of being a woman or a man, or being a woman or a man to replace the gender. They just want to take the place. You know, uh, women want to be uh, in men's position. Men are uh, backing down. I mean, we're in a confused society. I have time will be ready to go into that. There's a lot I can say about that, even in the church. But my main focus is to point us to the cross. My main purpose, brothers and sisters, is to point man to the cross, to the redemptive place, the only place of redemption through the sacrificial giving of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's my point. That's my purpose. That's my ministry. Thank God. All right. God bless you. Now, listen, I want to uh, challenge you. Again, some of the, the messages that we give you are comfort, encouraging, challenging. This one is a challenge today because I would like to make a comparison to the attitude of many Christians today, uh, as opposed to this lesson that Jesus taught us. I want to go to the book of St. Luke. St. Luke, the 12th chapter, and starting at verse 16, Jesus speaking, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater barns, and there bestow all my fruits and goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thine ease, or take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. And God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be uh, which thou hast provided? So he, laid, so he that layeth up treasure for himself 
is not rich toward God. I always found this story very interesting, very uh, intriguing, in fact, because Jesus called this man a fool. Now, first of all, let's look at this man. Let's let's examine uh, his his attributes here. Let's, let's examine what he did here. And I asked the question, of course, in our theme today, why do you suppose this man was a fool? Because when you look at it without reading the depth of it, it appears as though this man was pretty smart. It appears that everything he did was right. You know, I mean... Let's look at what it said. First of all, the Bible said uh, that he uh, saw the need to expand. Well, first of all, his fields brought forth plenty. So if his fields brought forth plenty, evidently he knew how to properly plant, how to properly farm, uh, how what type of soil, what type of uh, fertilizer, when to plant, uh, how to keep his uh, fields watered properly so that the seeds would not drown. Uh, all of the things that go with farming, this was a wise thing to do. Now, would that make him a fool? No. First of all, I don't want to get ahead of myself here because I, I kind of jumped ahead. But I want to define what the word fool means. Uh, remember, thou fool. That's what the Lord called him. Thou fool, you fool. This night thy soul should be revived of thee. Fool means one who behaves stupidly. Do you think this man behaves stupidly with his farming? No. One devoid of common sense. Do you think he didn't use a little bit of common sense in his farming? No, quite to the contrary. He behaved smartly as opposed to stupidly. He used knowledge and wisdom uh, on how to farm as opposed to one that's devoid of common sense. Again, the term of fool. Then the last term of fool means simpleton. You know, I can't help but uh, smile when I think about that because that was a word in my father's generation used. I hardly hear that word anymore, but my father used to say that, you know, don't be such a simpleton. <laughs> he used to say, I just kids. Or, you know, he would talk about somebody and say, that guy's just a simpleton. You know, meaning that you really don't have any depth. You just kind of dull. Just, you know, uh, again, it goes back. I've heard it further. You know, he said, no, I'm not simple. Don't call me simple. You know, it, it means a, 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 a void of, of depth. You know, kind of slow. It's probably the best way to describe it. One who is slow. Did this man appear to be slow in his farming techniques? No. He seemed advanced. Remember, his fields brought forth plenty. But let's further read about this man. The Bible said that he said, uh, verse 17, he thought within himself, what should I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? He said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater barns, and there bestow all my fruits and goods. In other words, this man's enterprise, if I can put it in modern sense, this man's enterprise expanded to the point where he saw the need to expand his business. He, he built greater barns. He pulled down the smaller barns because, again, he was, oh, he was growing. Now, does this sound like the attitude or the action of a fool? One who behaves stupidly. No. He, he was smart. Visionary, in fact. Saw the need to expand. Nobody in business would have called him a fool. Nobody would have looked this young entrepreneur, if I can throw that in here, as a fool, as a dummy. This man, uh, he's, he's young. He's progressive. His enterprise is expanding. And he's got to build greater facilities. Does he seem bored of common sense? Obviously not. Obviously he has good sense and vision, if I can even say. No, even the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. But here was a man who had vision to see into the future. And because he saw into the future, he realized that he was going to have to expand his business. So what did he do? I got to tear down these old barns because they're no longer efficient. It's insufficient. You know, again, that's not a man lacking common sense. That's a man of good sense. These, these barns and these, these places where I'm storing my goods, they're no longer sufficient. I've got to tear them down and build greater barns. Do you sound like a simpleton to you? Slow? No. He was right on the ball. He was thinking quite well. He was doing real well. Again, ask the question, why do you suppose this man was a fool and was called a fool by the Lord? 
Now, now, now mind you, I'm sure his, his colleagues and his, his uh, uh, associates uh, thought, man, this young man is brilliant. This young guy, oh, he, he's, a, he's ahead of time. He's ahead of us. And his older colleagues might have said, this, this young man sees the vision early and is responding and building likewise. Nobody would have looked at him and called him a fool. They wouldn't have called him one who behaves stupidly. They wouldn't have come and called him one who's devoid of common sense. They wouldn't have called him a simpleton. No, they would have had good things to say about this man. But let's read a little bit further. I will say to my soul, so thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. This young man was able to settle down to an early retirement. Now think about that. Work diligently. And you know, this is the thing, brothers and sisters, I think uh, when we're preaching this prosperity gospel, I'm about to get to that in a minute. I'm about to show you something here. But I think that this is what happens to uh, many of us that are preaching this, many of you, I should say, because I'm not preaching it. This prosperity gospel, God wants to make you rich. God wants you to have. Notice this man worked. See, here's the problem. One of the problems with prosperity gospel is, you know, that God's just going to give it to you because you give, he's going to give it back to you. Well, he is, but there are times and seasons. In other words, God is going to bless your effort. You just can't expect to just give and then sit back and wait for it to come back. That's not how it works. I would challenge that. And I would challenge you to think that. There is effort that you've got to put. You know, I hear people sometimes say, I got a promotion on the job. That's prosperity. You get a promotion on the job, meaning you have to work, of course, but you get to make more money because you are working. Not because you're sitting at home watching TV, playing on the computer, hanging out in the yard, drinking lemonade, expecting things to drop into your lap. There must be an effort on your part. Notice again, look at this young man now. Again, none of these things, these attributes, would have made him a fool. None of these things would have caused anybody to look at him foolishly. People would have praised him. People would have patted him on the back. I'm sure he was the recipient of a lot of awards in the business uh, field, you know. Uh, I mean, I mean there's just a lot of things. But again, nobody was calling him a fool. But let's read a little bit further. I was saying to my soul, take it easy. I can retire now. I'm young. I got the rest of my life ahead of me. I can sit back, eat, drink, and be merry. But now, here's where the foolish portion came. But God said unto him, thou fool. Oh, it's bad when God calls you a fool. You can call me a fool all you want. But I want to hear the Lord say to me, well done. If the Lord says to me, well done, good and faithful servant, doesn't matter to me what you say or what you think. The Lord called this man, who would have been praised by his, his peers, who would have been awarded for his efforts, who would have been looked upon and admired because of his accomplishments, was called a fool by God. Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required. Soul, soul. Your soul is going to be required. What have you done to make provisions for your soul? What have you done, brothers and sisters? All oh, you talk about prosperity and, and the Lord wants me to be rich and, and look at how rich I am. Look at how prosperous I am. Look at what I got. And you know what? What have you done to preserve and prepare your soul? Some of y'all are believing that stuff. Once saved, always saved. And I'm afraid many of you are going to be eternally lost buying into that false teaching. You're not once saved, always saved. You know, you can leave this thing. You can walk away from this thing. You can walk out of this thing. You know, you need to follow Christ. Paul said, I die daily. Paul said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. The book of Ezekiel says, uh, the soul that said it shall die. And I believe it's in Ezekiel where the Lord said, uh, all those things that you do and you turn away, won't even be mentioned. It's all your good that you've done. Won't even be mentioned. You know, I mean, this is the thing. And again, going back to what Apostle Paul said, uh, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But in the opposite, walking in the flesh brings condemnation. No longer being in Christ brings condemnation. So, you know, I'm, I'm not one that's persuaded. Once saved, always saved. I don't believe that. I don't preach that. I'm telling you that we've got to walk with him daily. Now, I do believe in eternal security. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. 
Let me explain this again. I've talked about it before. As long as I'm in Christ, the Bible said, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. There's one mediator that stands between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. As long as I am walking in Christ, and if I fail, again, I don't like that term mistake. You all have been following me know that I don't like, well, I made a mistake. I don't like that term mistake. You failed. You sinned. You've done the wrong thing. If we repent of our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. And that's my eternal hope, my eternal security, because as long as I am in Christ, if I fail and repent, he forgives me. But if I just go back out into the world and forsake all this and go back to lying and drinking and committing adultery and doing all those evil things, well, I'm no longer in Christ. I'm following the flesh. I'm following the lust of the flesh. I'm doing the things that the Bible said not to do, not to fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's what I'm doing when I turn away and walk away from Christ. So that idea of once saved, always saved, brothers, is the afraid I just ain't buying it. Afraid I just ain't buying it. I'm not buying it, and I ain't preaching. Thank the Lord. Trying to get us right with God. But again, getting back to the point, because I know I got off here. Uh, verse 10 said, But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night shall thy soul be required of thee. Now, who should those things be which thou hast provided? All that stuff you built up, all that empire you built, all that business stuff, all of that that you said you can take an early retirement. Now, who's going to have it now? You fool. You fool. Well, wait a minute, look at all this stuff up there. You know, it's interesting, brothers. This is, some of y'all think that you're going to go to heaven by your charitable works. That's not true. That's false. You think you're going to go to heaven by being good. Uh, I was listening to uh, this fellow the other day. Uh, on TV, uh, who uh, used to be a man, now he's converted to be a woman, had his sex change and everything. Well, he's committed an abomination. And to be honest with you, of course, not for me to say, I will tell you it's not for me to say, but I will offer my opinion here for whatever it's worth. I don't see how that man can be saved. I mean, you've completely reversed the, the, the physical portion of you and made yourself what God has not made you. Now, well, I ain't going to go with black and say it ain't my concern. It's, it's between him and God. But I remember him saying that he said, I just believe if I do good, the Lord is, when I stand before God, he's going to say, come on in. You did a good job. No, no, you all have this wrong. And, and, you know, it's interesting. A lot of people have the entire concept of heaven and hell wrong. They think bad people go to uh, hell. Good people go to heaven. Well, that's not true because there's none good. The Bible said there is none good. Not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No matter how good people think you are and how people try to put you in heaven, and I know he's up there looking down upon us, and I know he's in a better place, and all those things we say, it doesn't matter what we say. God is the judge. And all that stuff that we've done wrong, all that sin that we've done and all of us have is not going to stand in the judgment in the face of God. This is why there's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, again, I, I, I want to stay on the subject. I've got to throw that in there because I want you to know that Jesus is the only way. But let me, let me get back to this point here. This man was called a fool because regardless of his accomplishments, regardless of his, his great uh, ex expansion and, uh, you know, behaving smartly. Uh, nowhere was it, would he be found in the term fool, except in the latter. He did not make provision for his soul. So it didn't matter how rich he was. Didn't matter how people talked about him. Didn't matter even at his funeral, I can imagine. The people said things like, I know he's in heaven now. It didn't matter. Jesus said, fool, this night your soul shall be required of thee. So what made this man a fool? He made no provision for the soul. You know, I think there's something we should recognize in what Jesus said. Uh, and I believe that's, uh, let's see, I'm trying to look where that might be. Uh, I don't have the scripture on hand, but uh, Jesus said, uh, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Now stop and think about that. Think of the, the, the seriousness of that. You know, again, you can be on top of the world in this world. You know, we're only going to give it so much time. Time is nothing compared to eternity. 
Time is nothing compared to forever. All of us have an end of time. You know, time itself even will come to an end. But within time, as we travel through time, and you know, who's to say how much time you have? Some more than others. Some some live to be over 100. Uh, some die in their teens. I mean, you know, you, you, you have time regardless of how much it is. But what have you done with time to preserve your soul? Being a good person is not good enough. Now, here is my point. You look at this man today. Let's look at this man and see if he had walked into our churches today. How would we, as these prosperity preachers in this prosperity gospel, how would we look at such a man? We would say the man was blessed. We would say, look at, I know the Lord is blessing that man. Look at his businesses. His business has expanded. Oh, the Lord is blessing that man. Look at, he's expanded his enterprise. Oh, the Lord is blessing. Come on and tell us, brother, what the Lord has done. Oh, my God. He, his brother so-and-so, he's ready to take an early retirement. He don't have to work no more. He's given to charity. He's given to our churches. He's given. Look how the Lord is blessing this man. That's what this 21st century church would say, looking on a man like that. Look at how the Lord is blessing. Look at the rich man that Jesus spoke about. Here's another situation where Jesus spoke about the rich man that died. And, and the only thing that the, the Pope begged and Lazarus wanted was, was table crumbs, table scraps. All he wanted was the scraps from the man's table. And the Bible said that they both died. You know, I remember hearing this way back in grade school. The fellow talked about the common denominator. There's a common denominator that brings us all to the same level. Regardless of our status in life, there's a common denominator. That common denominator is death. Death brings us all to the same level. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Think about that. You can die rich, but you're still dead. You can die poor, but you're still dead. And all that stuff that happened, good, bad, or indifferent in this world, means nothing once we die. Come to the end. Think about it. I'm trying to put something on your mind. Because some of y'all just got caught way up into this prosperity gospel, and you become like this man, and you've neglected the soul. You drifted back out into the world, and some of you don't even know it. You're drowning and don't even know it because all you're doing is looking at your success. All you're doing is, is patting yourself on the back and others patting and praising you on the back on how successful you are, and you've lost focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, this is one of the things I've noticed that this prosperity does. Uh, it gives us an arrogance. And like I told you the other day about this preacher who said that we as Christians, we should walk with a swag. We should walk with a sway. Uh, you know, that's a man who, uh, a preacher, who really has lost the gospel message. You know, we are walking in arrogance because that's what it boils down to with a swag and a sway because you say we walk you humbly before the Lord. We should walk humbly before the people and offer them the gospel message. It's not about me. It's not about what I've accomplished or failed to accomplish. I'm trying to point you to the cross because that's the only place of redemption. Now, if you've gotten wrapped up in all your stuff, and I listen to it sometimes. Sometimes we have a tendency to judge people how blessed they are by how much stuff they have. Look at how blessed he is. Look at the car he drives. Look at how blessed he is. Look at the clothes he wears. Look at how blessed they are. Look at that diamond ring. All those diamonds and that studded, uh, uh, all those, that jewelry that they got, but all those diamonds and gold. Look how blessed they are. Look how prosperous they are. The Bible said this. What shall it profit a man? And I'm talking to the church now. I'm talking to us Christians. What shall it profit you if you get all of the uh, accolades, all of the praise, all of the money, all of the wealth, and you lose your soul? How long is forever? And I hope I beat this into your mind. How long is forever compared to time? How long is forever in hell compared to time? You know, this is a message, brothers and sisters, that has gotten lost in our churches. Uh, and I understand why it's lost because some people saying, I'm not waiting till I die to get my pie in the sky. I want my pie right now. Well, you know, that was the message that Reverend Ike used to preach about years ago. Reverend Ike really was a man ahead of his time. You heard me say that before. Reverend Ike's message would fit right into the mindset of today's church because people are thinking about, why should I wait till I die? Well, <laughs> because when you step out of time and into eternity, you ain't there forever. So, of course, you should be thinking about that. Jesus said when you build up your treasures in heaven, the moth doesn't get it. The words don't get it. The thieves can't steal it. When you build treasures in heaven, 
That's what Jesus said to the young rich ruler. Not a lot of times, it's these young guys that Jesus encountered and said, take all your riches and give it to the poor and you'll have treasures in heaven. And the people today say, I don't want to wait till I get to heaven. I want my stuff now. I don't want to wait till I get to heaven. I want everything now. And I can have it now, is what the people are telling you. You know, let's look at the comparison. Our time's almost up here. My hard time gets away. But again, look at Lazarus, the rich man that died, and the Bible said in hell he lifted up his eyes. But let's now also look at Lazarus, the poor beggar, who had a hard time in life begging. He wouldn't have been considered prosperous by today's standards. If he walked in our church and he does all the time, we don't want to be bothered with him. Man is poor. Man is begging. Some of y'all even say the man is cursed. And yet when he died, he received an angelic escort to the bosom of Abraham. I know I oftentimes use it that way. you know. But again, what made the difference? Knowing Christ, of course, Lazarus uh, was before minister of Christ, but he died in the faith. And of course, when Jesus went down into the Lord paradise and preached, he led captivity captive. Well, among those that heard that word was Lazarus. He was in Abraham's bosom waiting. Paradise, you know. Again, that's another subject. I'm not going to go off into that. But he had nothing in this world. And now he's got everything in eternity. You now, brothers and sisters, when you really begin to stop and think and set your mind on things above, as Jesus said, and follow the word of Christ and follow the word of the Lord, set your treasures uh, in, in heavenly things and things above. You know, he, he's talking about he brought the kingdom to us. He brought the kingdom to us. And he said, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Now, I'm not saying, please don't misunderstand. I'm not saying that we ought not be blessed in this world. Maybe we will and maybe we won't. And I say maybe because there are plenty of people in other parts of the world that don't have the opportunity or the blessing or the resource of the blessing that we have here in this country, the United States. I know that's right. I know that's right. Man, I'm hearing men from many all the time asking for aid and, and, and simple things like food and, 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 and the, uh, water and all, all kind of simple things. Everybody's not blessed like we are blessed here in America. I understand that. But when we set our treasures on things above, one of these days, brothers and sisters, all of us are going to step out of time and into eternity. And what we do in this life makes the difference. Uh, this is what the Bible also says about a fool. The Bible said in Psalms 14, 1, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Well, you've got plenty of educated fools, rich fools, uh, higher echelon, high society Fools, educators that are fools, preachers that are fools, people calling themselves Christians that are fools. Because even though they are successful in this world and call themselves, you know, a lot of people call themselves Christians that have, don't even know what it means. But they're fools. They deny the Bible. They deny the power. They deny the word. They say, don't take all that. I don't believe. Her. I just believe in being a good person. Fool. This night your soul shall be required of thee. And then, of course, as I said before, it, 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 it really, it's interesting, uh, brothers and sisters, especially now with social media, uh, I look at a lot of things now, a lot of the comments that people say to certain things, even like this or other things, people are attacking it, and, uh, you know, the, the Bible, like that Jesus didn't exist, and all that kind of stuff. Fool! That's what the Bible called you. Fool! My God. Now, again, I talked about the, the, the smart things. That this man did. My time was brought up here. Praise the Lord. But the man was a fool in what he failed to do. He traded time. And that's what I want to get to as I bring this to a close. He traded time for eternity. Ask yourself this question, Christians. Ask yourself this question. You that profess to be saved and are going after all this prosperity, are you trading time for eternity? That's what this man did. I'm getting everything now. I'm set now. I'm set for life. I can sit back now and just take it easy. Didn't realize his time was up. <laughs> I'm not laughing at that. I'm, I'm also last laughing in pity. This man didn't realize his time was up. How many of you know today that you'll be still be here at the end of the day? You don't know. Tomorrow is not promised. Your time is up. 
This man had prepared for time, not realizing his time was up, and he traded time for eternity. Now he's in eternity without Christ, and therefore without hope, eternally lost, eternally damned, in the, in the flames and the torches of hell, forever. Some of y'all don't like that. That's too bad. It's true. And I've got to warn you and let you know that hell is just as real as heaven. We talk about the joys and the bliss of heaven. I'm looking forward to it, but it's only because of what Christ did. What Christ did for me has made a difference in my life. And therefore, I'm heaven bound, not because I've been good, but because God has been good to me. Praise the Lord. So uh, amen. as we are looking at this man, he traded time for eternity. Nobody tell about it. Trading time for eternity. Why do you suppose this man was a fool? Brothers and sisters, don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. Give yourself to Jesus. Don't be a fool. Chase after stuff. The Bible said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Whatever your shape, Apostle Paul said, I learned that whatsoever state I'm in, I learned to be content. I've been uh, exalted, I've been abased. I've been through trouble, and I've been at peace. But whatever state I'm going through, I've learned to be content. And this is what we got to deal with even as we walk in life, walking with God. This prosperity gospel tell you that you have to suffer. The Bible says, inasmuch as Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourself likewise. People in prosperity are telling you that God wants to make you rich and God wants to make you a millionaire. God wants you to have this. But I'm here to tell you that what we do for Christ, that's the only thing that's going to last. Time is going to bring a difference in all things. We you trade time, the pleasures of time, the bliss of time, the awards of time. Will you trade it for your eternal soul? God bless brothers and sisters. We are blessed the Lord as brother Andre singing that song, Bless the Lord, O my soul. I hope this message found you. I hope this message blessed you. I hope this blessed message will make you think. Until next week, this is Scott Bradley saying, God bless you. Thank God for you. Look to hear you again real soon. I love you. God bless.